Welcome, everybody. Uh, today is Sunday, October 13th, and this is News Evolution with Laura Eisenhower, Patty Greer, and Alfred Lamarant Weber. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Laura, and welcome, Patty. Thank you. Thank you, Alfred. So great to see you both. Well, we have well, together. I wild. know that 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 you have a lot of news, and Patty has a lot of news, and I've got some news. But Laura, you know, you had talked about some astrology and other tidbits, and I know that there is so much going on on so many theaters and dimensions and levels. Do you want to share your astrology, and then as sort of to give the 360 degree higher level or do you want to leave that for later or over to you? Um, what do you think, Patty? Go for it because it'll lay an outline and then we can fill in the gaps of, of well, this happened and that's what this is about. Perhaps. Right, right. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a lot. Um, there's been squared aspects uh, today. There's a square with, uh, Chiron, Mars and Chiron. And Chiron is an Aries. Mars is the ruler of Aries. And the North Node is also an Aries. So with the influence of Chiron squaring Mars, the ruler of Aries, there's a lot of uh, deep wounds connected to ego identity. And, you know, humanity has been very compartmentalized in ego uh, constructs and negative ego and just duality and, you know, grooming and indoctrination and things that have really kept us from our multidimensional self that uh, it's really like a powerful time to face, you know, those wounds and it's going to manifest differently for people uh, depending on where they're at on their journey. For some, it'll be the wounded warrior, the wounded truther, you know, who's been censored and mistreated and targeted uh, for others. It will be, you know, perhaps that wounded identity where a label that you've been carrying begins to just not make much sense, begins to feel toxic, you know, where, you know, something deeper is beginning to emerge that isn't in alignment with holding on to these false personas and identities that keep us very divided and conquered. So a lot of those wounds are coming to the surface that they keep attempting to weaponize um, and they keep, you know, creating events and engineering events to, you know, stir up a lot of trauma so that we don't really pay attention to the healing. We're just in survival. Um, so we need to recognize that when we drop into survival, uh, be there for others that are being hit with these storms, of course, and do all we can to build community while we work on this collective wound that's impacted um, the human identity and and how it's been defined to us, how it's been, um, how there's ancestral patterns. And uh, Kevin, your son, um, that have been passed on. So sorry about that, you guys. Uh, and how, you know, there's... Uh, it hasn't been a uh, one size fits all or, 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 you know, everybody think the same way, but when we look at the NWO scenario um, it is, you know, sort of a herd mentality that the divide and conquer gets to such a point that we lose the soul matrix that we're not even thinking for ourselves and our differences won't even matter anymore because we'll be so assimilated into, you know, the AI and the problem reaction solution after all this devastation to begin to, put humanity down the next level trajectory of an artificial timeline that leverages and harvests, you know, our life force, our energy and our creative imagination, which it steals from in order to generate these false realities. So if we don't face that wound on a collective level or personally, um, the toxicity and intensity of the Pluto squaring Chiron um, is going to be very lethal for people. Um, even when I look at that Pluto square Chiron in a person's natal chart, usually they, you know, had a, a major, major illness, um, had a NDE, a near-death experience. Um, they were on death's door, but it was a huge growth for them. But if you're not going through the transformation and alchemical uh, process that is a part of the laws of creation, uh, and and you keep handing that power over, uh, it's it, it not... not um, empowering at all. And, and that dependency bond just strengthens because you think something outside of you is going to solve it. And, and if we don't break through from that, you know, that, uh, wounded ego is just going to get more and more assimilated in this loop of, of psyops, false flags, and all these different attempts to harness that energy and use it where if we can work together, 
we can um, take that pain and turn it into purpose, turn it into wisdom, turn it into action, turn it into building of community, relying on each other, having each other's back, rehabilitating and pooling our resources together, knowing that we're going to have to do it. Nobody else can do it for us. So there's a lot amping up. The full moon's going to be in Aries, uh, October 17th. Um, and that got it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, the 13th. So that's right around the corner and that's going to be in Aries. And so there's a lot of really intense energies, but like a lot of blasts of, you know, love, like when we're feeling that woundedness, can we tap into unconditional love or are we ashamed? Do we feel we can't admit to where we were mistaken? You know, are we able to, you know, bring that love in? Because if not, we're going to act out those wounds and we're going to treat each other pretty bad. And so an unconscious person tends to do that. Hurt people, hurt people. So, um, you know, it's time to just hold hands and like cry on each other's shoulders and, you know, um, be encouraging and helpful to those in need and, you know, vice versa, you know, that we'll have that love and support um, if the tables turn, which I'm sure they, you know, have in our lives and, and might uh, in the future. Um, this is the precipice of going through the heaviest of density to recognize the treasures that have been repressed within us and to begin to discover that again in the face of this adversity and challenge. Unfortunately, humans have to hit rock bottom before they get that or have to really have it hit home before they're going to even look there. And a lot of the betrayals and a lot of the deceptions and the things that people have woken up to um, are giving them nowhere else to go. But, it, but, but, but it's something to celebrate instead of, you know, get stuck in the, um, you know, victimhood of it all. That's an important part of the process and the mourning process of letting go of the old paradigm and inverted system dependency bond. But it's really important that you recognize that it's all collapsing because something beautiful is rising. And these greater abilities connected to our uh, dormant DNA, the junk DNA that hold the integration of polarity of sacred union, alchemical marriage, and the twin flame union within ourselves of the inner masculine and feminine, the magnetic and electric, um, you know, is like, wow, we actually, we, we came here for this. We came here to reawaken this. This is what the awakening is all about. And, and even though we're being pushed to the edge, we have to remember um, the opportunity instead of you know, feel into the doom and gloom and the psyops of losing hope and faith and, and, uh, trust in the process. Woo. <laughs> that was an orchestra of mental images. Thank you. Oh, sure. Yeah. And there's going to be a grand cross. There's a cardinal grand cross. Um, and a grand cross is a lot of squared aspects. So this is going to be a really intense, um, full moon. And um, a lot breaking down. Uh, the nodal axis is going to shift to Pisces, North Node. Right now in Aries, it's the healing of that ego identity and not being so compartmentalized so that the creative energy can really flow. Um, and then it's going to move to Pisces where it's going to be about the body, mind, spirit communication. What is your mind telling your body? What is your body telling you that you need to access within your unconscious to begin to change the belief systems and programmings and frequency modulations and distortions that are coming from the things we breathed in or uh, like put into our bodies. That frequency will be enough to break this down as Pluto moves into Aquarius. That is um, really going to help to dissolve and break down a lot of the dark weapons. So we just have to hold the faith. <laughs> what do you see for the election? And around that time. Well, there's a lot about the Neptune energy. Uh, Neptune and Saturn are going to uh, move into a conjunction not too long after. You know, it's really going to start to culminate in the year following. So I'm just kind of seeing it like tracking and getting closer and closer. And um, and that's really the embodiment of like the divine human who's like, OK, I can manifest from my creative imagination, my own future without it being infected. Uh, I see that it's a hall of mirrors. There's going to be a lot of, um, I mean, there's already derailments uh, to make this event uh, not so, you know, easy um, to throw in a survival uh, sort of um, solution uh, that we uh, have no choice about um, in order to keep um, certain uh, positive shifts and changes from happening. But we have to remember that we want to look at leadership outside of that system. We don't want to count on it to be the platform that the manifestation of unity and 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 patriotism and and the love for this country should manifest through. Um, and it's not a platform that's supportive. So regardless of what happens, let's just make sure that you know we build the strength and foundation amongst ourselves, so that you know those that we feel inspired by and 
you know, the leaders that are going to lead by example, just being on the healing journey and all the different skills and abilities that we can pull together, you know, is something that we want to be focused on and, you know, do our best with our, you know, intent, like we can break up storms and meditate and, and just really uh, take command of how things are unfolding um, and work on that while we work on what we do have some kind of control over, which is what we can do with one another. Um, so I feel, you know, our creative energy is everything. Our intent is everything. And the more we hold that, the more we, uh, hold that strong, you know, together, the less fragmentation and the less of the divide and conquer will take place, which, you know, opens up a lot of vulnerability to archonic attack and attachments and things manifesting that are more chaotic and more, um, you know, like troublesome, you know, all these outer events are showing the health of the collective and what we need to learn and what we need to figure out within ourselves and what we need to do with one another to see the outcome that we want to see. And I think there's a lot of growth still um, that we're up against in order to not allow the media or social media or any of these uh, trigger events to, you know, cause further division. And if we can really, you know, harness um, our own creative power and, and work together in mutual love and respect, um, we might see a favorable outcome, but it's a hall of mirrors right now. And, you know, it's not about losing ourselves to a belief in what's going on outside of us because it's, it's, there's too many layers, but it's about, you know, being a walking prayer, holding the intent and, um, you know, uh, just really focusing on, you know, what do you want to bring through and how can you stay in a circulation of energy with that? So you're not stagnating. So you're not waiting on something outside of you. So you're not, you know, counting on something. And uh, it's a black or white thing where the outcome is either good or bad. Like we have to, you know, um, just do our best to help manifest the the highest outcome. But, uh, you know, work on this because this is the ultimate lesson and growth period for humanity. This is why this is all happening. Um so, you know, it's hard to really predict, but I, I'm sensing that uh, it's going to be very, very hard for um, it to go smooth. Uh, but th there's going to be something that collapses and a leadership and a rising of something that uh, doesn't need the, the platform of, of, of DC and, and the elections to validate the, the level of support and, and unification that's already taken place. It doesn't need that to prove that that's what's happening. And that's what's ultimately going to win this war on consciousness. I love it. Isn't that great, Alfred? That is totally awesome. And that fits into what I would like to ultimately share. But over to you, Patty. Mm. Well, I'm going to throw in stories because the images that I was seeing in the um the videos in my mind as you were speaking were, wow, we're really in that right now. And when 9-11 happened 20 years ago or more, people came together and hugged each other and looked at each other and cared about their community. It was so shocking that we all got motivated to be really nice. And I think that this hurricane has really brought people to their knees. And now, waiting for FEMA, waiting for the government, waiting for any of them to care, became obvious. And instead of waiting any longer, all these amazing patriots and farmers and tractor guys and backhoe guys came together, real men, are, and they started rebuilding the bridges with the phone poles that broke and shattered and came down. So now there's this, in my opinion, reoccurrence of community love happening in North Carolina and in Florida. I have a friend who lost her car and everything on the main floor and we're hearing about the floods, but we're not hearing that she can't use any of it because it flooded with sewage and ocean water. So everybody's even doubly screwed. And we're seeing so many posts more than not um, about the, a beautiful string harp instrument that coincidentally is a device that causes issues and storms. And um, I'm teasing about the musical instrument, but um, these storms have been entirely false and historic. It, it doesn't happen in the mountains 400 miles from the shore or four hours. Um, it was for something, but it was way too far for a hurricane to keep going and getting strong and staying strong and maybe even getting stronger so it could do more damage. 
it seemed to be very directed because it was too abnormal. And I saw, I really want to help because I watch way too many videos of the people suffering. And I believe that it's true there's 12,000 people missing. How many are still missing from Lahaina? You know, and we're not talking about that or the children in the school buses that went missing. And in Lahaina, my God, the loss was massive. And the story has kind of gone away because, well, look at all these other things we could be focusing on. And meanwhile, there's this enormous fire in Wyoming. Now you're up there. I don't know if you're seeing it, but um, somebody texted, um, Wyoming fire is absolutely terrible, but in Oregon, there's far more land burning. It's like there's fires all over the country, but everybody's looking at the hurricane, and we forgot about the Hunter Biden laptop. We forgot about Nancy Pelosi and J6. We forgot about Chuck Schumer saying, if you mess with us, we've got six ways to take you out, or however he said it, but we know the message is, Tell the truth in times of universal deceit, and we're going to mess you up. So Laura knows this personally. I know it personally. I remember when Alfred got hit and his ear. Remember that? I remember when we were all tolerating DEWs. And that's all I want to say on the air, because those things are real. People have a hard time believing they're real until you get hit with one. And we are all survivors. And it's because we told the truth. And the people that come at us are sick individuals, is a way to put it. But going back to the love channel. Okay, so over there in North Carolina and South Carolina, there's so much destruction and people missing. So somebody in my town said, hey, we're taking a truck to North Carolina. We need supplies for those people. They need this, that, this, that. And I wrote, you know, a private message on Faceplant, Facebook. And I said, are you for real? Because I will go shopping. I've been trying to find a way that goes direct people to people. I am very honored uh, that you're doing this in our little town and I'm gonna go shopping as long as you're for real. Oh, I'm for real. Here's the address, bring it to the deck. So I actually went to Walmart and bought $500 worth of toothbrushes, toothpaste, combs, brushes. I mean, it's like we are so blessed not to be burning, flooded, robbed. <laughs> I mean, I feel really lucky this week. And so I wanna share because life is good here. We're not being tortured, but they are. And the government didn't even care for 10 days. Uh, they just went missing. He's at the beach. She's trying to get money for people to vote for her. So God bless everybody. But meanwhile, there's so many people that drowned that we're not going to even find for years to come. They're just missing. And all these families that are feeling this, but people came together. So I was so excited. My little town had a semi going. So I drive out there and I bought all this stuff and uh, loaded it in my trunk, drive all the way back. She's not home. Okay. So I went home, went by later. She's not home. I'm not leaving it on the deck because I spent a lot of money and I don't want it getting borrowed permanently. So I call her on the phone and I said, Hey, I'm bringing the stuff. Uh, are you the one driving the truck? She says, well, no, it's actually their second round. It's Walmart truck, semi, and they're working for FEMA. Now, give me a moment, because it took my friggin' breath away, that I just was almost ready to be tricked. Now, bear with me, but I there's two different schools of thought. Biden said, oh, we got there right away, and FEMA's taking care of everyone. And then the last part of his sentence was, Everybody's happy now. Do you remember that? Did you guys see it? Biden said, everybody's happy now. It's yeah. like, but first he had said, what storm? Like, so not present that somebody said, sir, what are you doing about the storm? And he went numb for a minute and said, what storm? Oh, they've got everything they need and everybody's very happy. My neighbors believe that. My mom, 95, believes it. People that I talked to yesterday believe it. I went to such a great party and I'm always told no politics.
oh, come on, not everybody's. Really? Yeah, mom. <laughs> yeah, Patty. Yeah, I mean, everywhere I go, no politics. Like what? Seriously, people still don't get it. They still don't get it. So anyway, I say to the lady on the phone, seriously, are you teasing me? Or is this really a FEMA donation? Oh no, it's just a subgroup of FEMA. I said, Miss, Miss Apache with a great name. I really thought we were doing something special. I thought it was you or a person driving a truck there. And now it's a semi working with FEMA. God bless you on your journey. I'm gonna return 295 items to Walmart. Have a nice day. Oh God, I was mad. I had to drive out there and unload almost 300 items and sit there while he checked them in and returned them. And I looked like an idiot to everybody that came up to the counter. I, I mean, it is such an interesting time to stay kind and to feel blessed. And I was beyond fury, but I got over it real quick because I have a fun car and it reminded me to have fun. As soon as I stepped on the gas to head out there, it was like, oh, yeah, crank the music up. It's like, duh, don't forget that you're just surrounded by idiots right now who really can't help themselves. Why ruin my day? So that's my big story. I took everything back. I felt terrible, terrible. I mean, they need help. We want to get it to them. But I am not going to be tricked because, unfortunately, I do believe the many shows that are saying those trucks and that group with the four letters starting with an F are taking care of people in the migrant shelters with our donations. I just don't want to do it because a lot of them just raped someone. I live near Aurora, Colorado, so we've got that gang with all the tattoos. Maybe we're supporting them with the... Uh, generous donations to North Carolina, but I do know that those people still didn't even get their 750 because either they don't have a computer to go online or they were literally denied. They took the time to fill out the forms and they were denied. So we need citizens to show up because we don't have anybody in DC that gives a flying care. And I just watched an entire video about the vice president running for queen of America. And she had her staff undo an entire donation center that was all set up for the people that need it. And they filled an airplane with it. And she pretended that she was gonna have the stuff flown <clears throat> to the extreme place where they would use it. But instead it was a photo op and that plane never went anywhere. And all those supplies did not sit outside available to people to show up, but it was all taken from the donation center for a photo op for Miss, Miss, I don't want to say her name, but she's married to a man who was also exposed recently as having young children for boyfriends. And Tampon Tim was now called Touchdown Tim. I don't know if you saw that because He's been reported to have experienced young children also overnight. And all the evidence is out. And then we've got, I mean, I think that the world is laughing at us until we bring in a real man because this whole emasculating of America is a real joke. I live near Boulder, Colorado, where men drive scooters. I ride a Harley, you know, I mean, the men here, I used to ride a Harley, I don't now, but I like real men. I like men with muscles that are out there helping people in North Carolina and in Boulder, they're all riding scooters and their little back foot is up and they got their hair in a bun. And God bless, I'm not making fun of those lovely, mm, somewhere in the middle masculine men. I think they're called beta now, but they were bragging about Kamala being married to a beta man. And I don't know if you saw the video of Tim Waltz, um, dancing in a little g-string thing but oh my god it's so exposed and we're sitting here taking it so this is a period in history where it's not fun to be smart but we're the world is counting on people like you guys and um p 
people like me to say, I am not going to back down from telling the truth about any of it because I see a beautiful future and intelligent people have to win. We have to somehow live to this election as a country and lay it down. And I think the funniest thing of all is, oh, they're neck and neck. They're neck and neck. It's like, ain't nobody showing up at her events. I'm sorry to say, I feel like it's hard knowing this much and seeing the world be so clowned out, but we are seeing the world where up is down, left is right, and the poor children and teenagers are so confused. It's not fair to them. Oh my we, the elders, are going to have to hang tight, bite on, and just carry it to the finish line. I did almost buy a huge American flag that's got two sucker cups to the car, and I thought, okay, It's enough that I wear a flag shirt. I don't need to fly a screaming flag on my car and get shot at as I go down the highway. Because some people really hate our country and they pretend they don't. But you can't possibly be this close to communism and not know it unless you're either really unintelligent or hate our country. And we've got a lot of people in the Congress that hate our country or that are just too not smart. I'm trying to be so generous with words, and I hope all that worked. I'm not bitter. I'm just determined to see the other side because I've got kids and grandkids that I care about. We all do. And um, we're not going to leave them a trash can. We're not going to leave them a trash can. Beautiful if we can help words. It. Yeah. Really so beautiful. God bless us. Stay strong, patriots. Over to you, Alfred. Well, thank you. That that was awesome. But, uh, Laura, do you have any comments from from the point of view of your astrology insights as as to what Patty shared with us? Well, I think you know just what we're seeing uh, in the world. You know, there's that Chiron energy connected to Aries, but when it's uh, an injury that you can't really see until later on, then, you know, it goes into the unconscious. So when we see the indoctrination, when we see the gender confusion, when we see the labels of like, what is your pronoun and, and, and just, um, it's like important that uh, we awaken our divine blueprint, our inner masculine and feminine, but, you know, they're leveraging that part of the awakening in a way that's inverted that, um, you know, some are just being themselves. And then that's beautiful, you know, but like, how much is it, uh yeah not authentic um just for the sake of uh you know you know kind of fitting in or feeling like you have no choice um are people going to stand up are parents going to stand up are are the students in school you know going to retaliate i retaliated i couldn't sit still in class i was calling things out i was like that's bs I, i'm not going to go to school you know and i i did, i had the worst attendance in my high school um and, and, you know, I'm not saying that that is the solution. Sometimes you have to have your foot in both worlds in order to be able to create change as well um, to each their own. Uh, but yeah, this level of, um, you know, you know, indoctrination, you know, seeing the pride flags everywhere, having um, just the agendas, the funded agendas, the globalist agenda and everything, you know, dupe people into thinking that their good intent and their progressive nature and their open mindedness is what they're standing for. And everything else is the polar opposite, which is ridiculous. And they've lost um, uh, a deep understanding of what's really and they never really grasped what has happened to our country. What happened in 1947? What happened in the early 50s? Um, the unconditional surrender agreement I talk about, I won't get into detail about, but without knowing these things about the different projects, mind control operations, psyops, geoengineering, um, and and just the the script being written for humanity right now, um, without understanding that, uh, yeah, we, we we see it everywhere. It's everywhere. And until you know there's a massive crisis, do people normally um, you know create a change? So this full moon coming up, there's going to be an opposition between Mars and Pluto and Pluto moving into Aquarius is going to happen in November and it's going to stay direct. It's going to stay in Aquarius for like mm -hmm. 20 years. And, um, and I just feel like, uh, there's going to be enough that, um, you know, pushes people 
like we had on our own journeys when we went into the dark night of the soul or we had to have a boundary or we needed to go off and go on an adventure or we went to uh research information you couldn't find in a classroom you know there there needs to be and there will be these kind of events and breakthroughs for people the the scariest thing though are the ramifications of what this generation is going to be carrying think of all the ones that got sex changes before the age of 12 um and and the ownership of children you know where you know, even in some countries, uh, if the mother takes the child uh, out of the system, it's considered kidnapping, even if the father's not involved, because the government owns your children more than the parents. Um, so, you know, there's going to need to be an uprising that is done, you know, in a way that focuses on the creative side of ourselves. To battle something that you can't wake up and change isn't going to work. Understanding, though, the different levels and layers of trauma-based mind control and alters and um, possessed personas that people carry that isn't really them is going to be a very, very important thing for people to grasp. So they're no longer um, agreeing to what they think is a sincere individual. So they understand that, like, in order to help them, we have to understand what they've been through um, so that they can be an advocate. They can be on a healing journey like uh, a lot of individuals that are already out there that we can understand what these family lines have been doing generation to generation and um the grooming of people in these leadership positions uh the operations that have been done the ssps and all this kind of stuff uh which you know a lot of us express that when humanity can grasp that they will no longer fall prey to the um theater and the illusions and and there might be a chance to really help these souls to recover and heal. And if you know you can turn a perfectly benevolent person into an assassin, think of what you can do to a very dark criminal that has um, have had unresolved trauma passed down generation to generation. Um, recover with with harmonious, positive, um, you know, technologies connected to light, sound, frequency, and DNA awakening, epigenetics. Um, you know, deconstruction of uh, these really harmful behavior patterns. It's all there under our nose. And um, so it's just going to take a lot of, you know, courage and um, and us staying strong uh, because we've been a very targeted group um, and uh, and and just know that there's nothing that we can't reverse. Everything connected to assimilation and into AI requires us to buy into the bait of divide and conquer and the things that lower our vibration to a place where we can be assimilated into something um, that you know, takes over the nervous system and, and really separates us from the rest of ourself. So this is a really critical place in making the choice of um, unlocking the doors and moving through these gatekeepers, these frequency fences um, to retrieve, you know, the treasures of all that we are um, because uh, yeah, they're going to do whatever they can for us to buy into the bait. And, and I say this redundantly, but the if it was enough for the weapons to just work on their own, they wouldn't bother with the fake news. They wouldn't bother with what they're doing to our children in the schools. They wouldn't bother with all these different campaigns and false movements. They require that for the dark technology to work. But when we break through that, when we break the mind control, when we collapse all of that within our own system and win the war within, those dark weapons have nothing on us. And this is a time where we need to break that down and de-weaponize the human because that is what has happened to human consciousness. So... Boom. Well, well, thank you. That that is so deep and so and so useful. Yeah, yeah. I I'd like to follow up on on this and share two items, if I could, in the context of what Laura has has shared from the astrology point of view, and what Patty has shared. Is that okay? Definitely. Yeah. And there's, you know, more details about the actual aspects like sun, square, Mars, and like these different things. But yeah, it's just major, major tension. And that can lead to a really beautiful transformation and breakthrough. So absolutely. Yes. Can't wait to hear what you have to share. Yeah. Yeah. And, and ju just to make it easy for the viewers, I'd, I'd, I'd like to do a, a, a screen share so that, so that people know what, what I'm, what I'm, uh, talking about so i i'm gonna gonna go to item one now and put it up on the screen and um uh so so the first item uh you can see here is peace and space and that is our tribunal 
uh, on which I'm a judge, the National and Common Law Tribunal for Public Health and Justice, uh, which Laura and Patty are both uh, active in, and uh, which Laura has very generously been a sponsor of, is, is presently engaged in creating the first uh, ever international conference uh, uh, for Earth and Mars human planetary integration. And there are, uh, according to expert views, about 1 million advanced hum human Mars humans living under the surface of Mars and their representatives visit Earth in their rocket ships and are in touch with the CIA government here. And, uh, and so, uh, and uh, they are more advanced technologically than earth humans. And they, they are more advanced sociologically and philosophically than earth humans. And so what we're doing and this is the first page of a, a, um, uh, a new 300-page book that will accompany this conference um, that will give all of the public evidence and uh, share uh, how Earth humans and Mars humans can uh, are two, the Earth human civilization and the Mars human civilization can be integrated for peace, um, for the peace uh, but on both of our planets and for the advancement of the solar system. And that's very necessary now because Mars used to be a verdant planet like Earth and uh, because of a, uh, a reptilian uh, human nuclear war 700,000 years ago on the planet Tiamat, which was also a verdant planet, uh, Mars was uh, uh, damaged in that, in that planet, and it was turned into a pumpkin-shaped planet uh, with no... Uh, a service ve vegetation with its atmosphere destroyed and with um, uh, 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 very dangerous reptilians, uh, beasts on the surface and with the 1 million reptilian humans uh, survivors under the surface of Mars and uh, Tiamat was turned from the most advanced planet in our solar system, a human planet, it was turned into the asteroid belt. And uh, the law of one tells us that about 20, uh, about 2 billion souls, human souls that were incarnating on uh, Tiamat had to be transferred in an emergency had to be transferred by the universe government from Tiamat to Earth, where they are currently uh, uh, incarnating, where, where they are currently in incarnating. And we have here on planet Earth, uh, we are very close to nuclear holocaust now with the possibility of Earth being turned into uh, another uh, asteroid belt uh, with um, uh, in the Middle East, uh, Israel about to attack Iran uh, with, with nuclear weapons that would lead to a, a nuclear war uh, with uh, uh, Russia threatening nuclear war because of the 
Ukraine, Russia, nuclear war, and all of these entities, uh, Iran uh, and its allies, Hamas and um, uh, Russia and Israel, uh, they're all led by individuals with reptilian souls. So we have reptilian souls that have incarnated into the leadership of Israel, Hamas, Iran, and they're all threatening nuclear war because in the United States, we have reptilians who have incarnated at the leadership of the United States because they're all threatening nuclear war to to uh, bring about a nuclear holocaust on this planet to turn it into uh, uh, to turn it into the asteroid belt like Tiamat was turned into, and so uh, this is this uh, particular. We're, we're now engaged in this conference for peace in space, uh, whereby the advanced Martian uh, civilization and the advanced human civilization, those of us humans that have advanced human souls would come together to integrate uh, and and we have the technology to do that through the Mars Jump Room pr pr program and uh, to make sure that the Earth and Mars civilization come together to turn both Earth and Mars into peaceful and to bring peace to this solar system. And so uh, this will be coming out um, uh, at the beginning of 2025. So uh, this is a positive de development at the time that the American election, although it's happening, uh, the election itself on December 5th, there are all the uh, signs that it doesn't matter who's going to win the election because all the signs are that the two parties have decided that it doesn't matter who's going to win the election. Nobody's going to concede and they're still going to uh, fight it out. And so if I could stop sharing and go to my second sharing at this time, um, uh, and it take me just a moment uh, to do that. Uh, let me just do 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 do, do that. Um, and it take me just a second to do that. Um, uh, sorry, I. Oh, I, it is. I got the wrong thing here, and. Uh, so uh, let me put up the view here. And so um, you, you may be able to, 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 to see this. This uh, I uh, uh, published a book called The Public Inquiry. In the future, will the United States break up into many regions, which I see finally may be happening at this time. And that is that uh, I was a, a, a futurist at Stanford Research Institute starting in January of 1977. And when I first joined it in January of 1977, they had a contract with the Central Intelligence Agency. They had a 50-year contract to write up 50-year alternative futures of the USA. And my first week there, the director, Willis Harmon, drew me aside and said, Alfred, in the future, the United States is going to be broken up 
into many regions. And this was in January of 1977. And uh, <clears throat> so I, I, I said to myself, wow, when is this going to happen? So now I've been doing the analysis. And if you go on the internet, you'll see that, that there are many, many maps. In fact, uh, uh, of the future balkanization of the United States that is being bro broken up into many regions. Some of the, uh, of the most complete studies have been, are maps that have been developed by professors in Russia on behalf of the KGB. And these are uh, blue states versus red states. And they break up into blue state regions and red state regions because the, the different sides break up and they can't work together and they, and they break up and they don't honor the constitution and there's the breaking up. And today I turned on the television for one hour and in the first hour, uh, you know, I just stayed there for one hour and they were talking about that they're not gonna honor the constitution after the election and uh, the first thing that came to me is that, well, that's what's going to happen. The United States is going to break up into regions where they not end, not end up honoring the Constitution. They've already got it set up that they have the Speaker of the House and the effect of January 5th and January 6th, 2025. And they've already got it wired on both sides. They have figured out how to break up the United States, and they're all making arguments and disinformation. And, and, you know, they've all figured out how to break it up without even knowing that if they break it up, they've, they've, they've broken up uh, the great nation and the Constitution. And what? They're going to be left with just the United States into regions, which is what the CIA told me what would happen in January of 1977. And so if people want to read this, <coughs> we, <coughs> we have known this, that this might happen since January of 1977. And I have there what would happen. I have their ways to avoid it. Uh, so those are the two things that I'm involved in now. Number one, uh, setting up the first ever conference uh, to bring together the advanced Martians and the advanced Earth people uh, so that we can uh, bring together uh, the first uh, integration of uh, uh, the advanced Martian human civilization and the advanced Earth civilization, number one. And secondly, showing to Americans what will happen and the path that they're on. If they just continue on this thing of not wanting to recognize the outcome of the election. So that's what I wanted to share with you. And I'm just going to stop sharing now. And that's it. That's what I wanted to share. Wow. I like that your last line was, if we don't choose to change things and wake up. <laughs> that's the biggest if, because no. I'm sorry to say, I didn't like any of that as an outcome. But no. your vision is very clear that if people don't wake the heck up, we're going to be screwed. We've already been screwed for three and a half years, but right now I'm driving around town and there's not intelligent signs out on people's lawns. Like there is so much co cognitive dissonance that people actually have, have no idea how crazy it is. So your bizarre potential outcomes um, are definitely food for thought. Uh, I am on the other side by far of saying, I don't want to yell it, but get your freaking brains on kids. Like 
kids of all ages, we can't sit around and be dumb anymore. We are right here at the gates of hell, and we've got a leadership problem that's a disgrace to the world. We have fallen from the number one country to a laughing stock with people like Dr. Rachel Levine, like Mark Milley. Like they're trying to pull off so much, and now they're all scared to death because they know that if Trump wins, they're all going to the gallows. They all know it because of their treasonous hearts. They know that they've done nothing good in the last bunch of years. They're all pure evil with the intention to do the things you're claiming in your previous book this year, uh, to break the country apart, to have no constitution, to have yes mean no, left mean right. These poor kids. Oh, my God. I asked my child going to school, grandchild, uh, what's it like having a music teacher that wears girl clothes one day and boy clothes another day, and it's calling itself Mix P. Um, excuse me, that's a little too specific, but that's its name. And I asked my sweet little darling, I said, how do you feel about that, honestly? And she looked right at me and she says, it's not polite to ask questions like that. It's not polite to ask questions like that. So this is what they're being taught. And the principal's child had a sex change a few years ago at 10 years old. So these are the schools in Colorado. We're getting sprayed like bugs. We've got a very beta man-on-man -man governor that's married to a man. I have no issue with it but we're really being overtaken by beta people. Like the girls can't decide to be a girl and the men, because we're being told that. And the epitome of what I see in public really makes me see that we've got major mental problems as a society right now. But I live near Boulder, Colorado, where we major in cell towers and chemtrails. I mean, there's so much dirty money in Boulder. There's so much CIA in Boulder that I can barely stand going into town to do chores. That's it's insane. I just watched a documentary on just pharmaceuticals that they give to kids and diagnoses, um, you know, and it's like, oh, they have this condition. And we know that because we grew up with that. But the extremes of it, you know, a, a, a star seed child, you know, with advanced intelligence or that is really able to feel and that feels a lot and is overwhelmed by what, you know, feel, oh, just drug it, drug it, drug it. And you know, these are like multiple pills at such a young age and what it does to the brain chemistry, it numbs them out. And then like, and, and even they interview them, they say, well, I can now function. I feel this is the way I'm supposed to be, supposed to be, you know, we're silencing the leadership of the future by suppressing it with these drugs. It's just unbelievable. Like that there's not more of an uproar. I mean, when I go to hotels and I just check in, like what's going on in the weird world out there, it's the same and even worse, um, ridiculous, you know, commercials. I just, it blows my mind. It really blows my mind. Um, and, uh, you know, and we saw just the cubicles and just the, and that, you know, wasn't enough now with, um, and, 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 it, and, you know, for a lot of people that was the breaking point, but, um, yeah, there's going to be a, a, a incredible opportunity to heal. But if you're not aligned with those synchronicities and that knowingness within your heart, you're not going to manifest that in your life. You know, and it's right under everybody's noses. I don't think there's anything that, you know, we can't overcome. But if you don't have the ability to perceive it, you're 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 not you're you're going to just stay entangled at, at the cost of your human form, at the cost of your DNA, um, future generations, reproduction, um, the survival of our species. You know, and when we look at uh, different species that have interacted with us, you know, and and we see them all as aspects of ourselves from different aspects parts of the timeline and different trajectories that we might have gone down um the the bioengineering of a human uh is definitely like a form that we see that seems to want to get his genetic material back to make up for where it's been enslaved and where it's been duped mm. <clears throat> wow some yeah. of that bigger picture stuff you know like i just feel like with what you shared alfred um it's it's condensing so much into like what we need to do in the here and now to prevent certain trajectories from going too far that would cause a lot of time to um, sort of repair. And, and we don't need to wait for somebody, you know, to do 
it and you taking the initiative like you do uh and all the levels that you do are it's just amazing so that was really cool to watch writing another book at 82 years old i mean go out you won't be writing books till 100 um can you show us how long your hair is because it's hiding you have the most amazing grown-up man hair no alfred oh okay, i was gonna say yes let's see it alfred let's see your ponytail I just want to be sure you didn't cut it off. Amazing hair. It's just, oh, wow. Right? I'm glad I asked because you have amazing. Nobody would know the dude has amazing big hair. And I'm proud to say I know why. <laughs> One of the many no, reasons no. you don't cut it. You know that wisdom comes through those antennae. But you also take a product that I'm going to say is my punchline of this. My friends have seen me go through two attempts to kill me because I tell the truth and bad people just hate it. Oh, I love your hair. Thank you. No, it's so and cool. I survived two attempts on my life because of C60 Evo. It's a miracle molecule. And I know you both take it also. But this saved my life in so many ways that I just have to bring it up at the end of the show because I'm so grateful, even though I've been through ridiculous things with lousy people. I've watched my crop circle industry, my UFO industry. Uh, it went from being so fun to so criminal. Oh. Like everybody died and then all these actors moved in and took their place. And now when I kind of look at the events going on in that field, I'm just like, oh, gack. And they're calling them legends. I call them leftovers. But I just left because with my frequency, not that I'm better or worse, I just no longer resonated with the energy of, you were talking about, Laura, the levels of competition that are just ghastly. And now what I'm learning is that the truther movement my friend called me she was just at an event she said my god it's so controlled it is so obvious the guys that have been given all those hundreds of thousands of fake views and they go to these events and they're controlling all of the influencers to only say this and to move the energy there like this whole thing is such an actor grid of crap that even the truthers are losing their marbles and integrity. And I'm watching all this because I'm old and I've had chapters of eyes open. And I'm really curious because I've got the strength to hang in here like you guys do. Laura, man, you've been, you're like a punching bag like I've been. You know, Alfred's a man, but you and I have really come back from boom, boom. Oh, no, I feel like I sometimes I'm like I just feel like a pinata, like a globe, like a pinata. Pinata, yeah. Like, I, you know, and then when I when I bounce back and I'm like all oh, like raising my vibration, it's just like wham, <laughs> something else comes. It's just like, oh my yeah. god, the but, last attack is probably the worst I've experienced yet in this field, but I won't go into it. But um, yeah, it's so nice to see you guys both today. Been so looking forward to it because it's been a while. But um, yeah, Patty, gosh, your journey, and all that you've given the humanity and all that you continue to do and your strength, both of you are just, whew. Well, surviving two full hip replacements and doing shows five days later, my brain's on fire. I feel like I know more than I've ever known, but I've got it in a good place. Certainly not an ego place because I'm old. I look in the mirror and go, damn, you're old. But hey, I'm still here. I win. And if it wasn't for this product... I, I don't know if Alfred and I would be here. Lori, you're still a baby girl <laughs> compared. But um, I know that you take the product also. And I'm only mentioning it because I want people to survive and get to the other side. This is C60 Evo, the website C60Evo.com. But what it is, is a longevity formula that won the Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize used to be a compliment. Now it's a joke. But uh, in 1996, it's a miracle molecule that's the best in its class for almost every application. 
And all of a sudden they realized they did a toxicity study, you know, because they were like, people should, you know, is it toxic? And it turned out it extended life almost twice. And uh, it is so mind boggling healing, but I know that it's what I'm doing that's helping my bones and joints come back together. My dermatologist looked at my scars this week and she said, morning, noon and night, all I do is look at scars and cuts and heal. And, you know, she said, I've never seen anybody heal as fast as you. It's this product. I swear it's this product. But my attitude, I'm so grateful now because I survived. Knock, knock. And, um, you know, these these obstacles are going to knock at our door like the creepy lady that got was growling. Oh my God, there's so many weird people now. But we better get ready because my mom yelled at me, you're not still trumping, are you? And I said, mom, please just promise me you won't have a heart attack if he wins. Um, we're gonna have a lot of Trump derangement syndrome attacks of the mental mind if Donald Trump and Bobby Kennedy Jr. and J.D. Vance and Tulsi Gabbard and the real true patriots that give a flying fook about this country get brought back in office. And I know there's a lot of people that don't trust Elon, who's also going to have a very big position. But what did he do? He bought Twitter and he removed almost more than half the staff, I believe, because they were traitors, losers. And our company has been cooking with gas, but all of a sudden I'm fighting the same crap as I did with my movies. And I'm seeing this company rise, it's everywhere. And they're selling 10% of what their bottle says. And I just pray every day they're not putting uranium in their stuff because not good people not good intentions and they're everywhere so i know it's agency pushing bad shit to the top and hiding the good stuff and that's what i've seen in the ufo field it's what i've seen in the truth field and it's what i'm tolerating in the c60 industry and my partners have made it we're the only lab in the world for 33 years making this product uh, working with the miracle molecule and to see all of this low quality stuff hit the market, but being pushed uh, to really show you that now we're seeing comments of the stuff doesn't work. Well, of course, if you buy that. So here I am again. I just need to take another teaspoon and I'll keep smiling because really in the long run, everything's a test. Everything anymore is a test. How good are you going to be to the world, no matter what is pulling on your leg? I'm going to be really good to the world because ultimately I am super grateful and glad to be here. I love you both dearly. We have hung in here for years doing news evolution and never did I think we'd be three weeks from an election that's either communism or freedom, in my opinion. It's that clear. Now, I don't know if Mr. Trump wins, if it's true freedom, but it sure feels like it because of his executive orders. I don't give a crap about his arrogance and his wealth and his personality and his conceitedness. All that stuff doesn't matter. I have no derangement. But what I don't like is seeing people suffer and watching a government do nothing but send all of our tax dollars to war. Those people got nothing and Ukraine got another pile of billions when Zelensky came over and had lunch with Joey and, you know, Joe Obama. So got a bunch more money and he went back home, la, 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 la. And I'm just sitting here going, I hope this is a PSYOP movie. I hope we're not that dumb of a country. And um, because I know that my tax dollars are killing people, it breaks my heart. And... Um, so I just bought a car as a big ass write off. It'll be a lot less people I kill with my tax dollars this year. Mm -hmm. I'm finding solutions in the weirdest places. But after my meeting last week with the CPA telling me, no, it, it's this bad. And I'm like, oh, God, 
serious. And then I went to the bank to get a bunch of cash out because we know the banks are blah, blah, blah. And they said, no, nope, no, nope, there's a limit now because everybody's taking cash. I was like, okay, really? I, I'm asking for this much. And they couldn't give it to me. So that's why, that's why I'm like, okay, I'm going to spend it before they take it. Wow. Yeah. And I just got something from my little town bank. There was pages of all these new things in our rules and regulations have changed. When we said this, now we mean this. When we said this, now we, I mean, I read it before the show and I'm like, whoo, I thought if I wasn't with the national bank, it wouldn't, you know, but they're basically giving themselves permission. Ultimately, so many words that you won't miss the one that says, and we can steal your money and give you the thumb. That's my thumb. Oh yeah. So, um, we better make the most of it and enjoy every day. I had a big chocolate cookie before the show because I can. So if that gives me pleasure, that's what I'm going to do. I encourage everyone to find things that give you pleasure and do it, but also to stay alive, to see the punchline, get yourself some C60 Evo and all three of us take it. I think it's why we're still here. I know it's why I'm still here because I don't take other things. And um, I feel like I'm getting younger with age in my attitude because I'm so determined to be here and to see the greatness come back for everyone. I, I see it. I think we are in for a great future as long as we can not let go of our bite and hang on to the punchline. Mm, absolutely. Oh, that's really beautiful. And yeah, I, I just, I guess my final thoughts, um, just in sharing, you know, the astrology, it's it's nice to know, you know, what's going on with the aspects, but what's really important to know, you know, is the nucleic acids of our DNA are elemental, earth, air, fire, water. Mitochondrial DNA is connected to the fifth element. November 30th to December 17th of every year, the sun moves through the 13th sign and the ether element is available. And that energy and that um, element, the dodecahedron and platonic solid was put in reversals in the planetary grids and in our being so that we wouldn't be able to access the miracle vibration, the capacity to alchemize and transmute. Um, it, it just didn't come so easily. Uh, these were very veiled arts or just understandings and teachings that uh, you really had to uh, work on. Now, you know, this Ascension window is all about that connection and that coming in. And what that does is it purifies the inner elementals. Uh, it clears the toxicity. Um, it purifies. It connects us with unconditional love. Um, it gives us uh, just deeper connection to our intuition and our higher mind and the inspiration that comes with that um, so that we stay creative instead of stagnant, waiting for something else to solve it for us. And what's beautiful about, you know, really breathing this in and seeing how weaponized it's been to not breathe and not connect and not come together um, is that, you know, this is a very threatening, you know, energy and element because we are not in dependency anymore when we access this. It provides us synchronicities, magic, flow, regeneration, healing on a really, really massive level. And I know the C60 um, is really uh, assisting in the body's ability to assimilate that into the cells and into the body. And I remember doing an interview with you with one of the experts um, and we got into that and it was really wild with the mitochondrial DNA. But I just wanted to point out, you know, that part of the year and I might do a challenge. You know how people sometimes do, do do a challenge with me and I might like just go for it and just be like, all right, starting November 30th to December 17th, who wants to do this with me where it's going to be like major breath work and, um, you know, maybe juice fasting or just something to really leverage such a powerful time of year that uh, without knowing it's really there, um, you know, sometimes we get distracted Uh one year I really took advantage of it and I never saw more beings and, and visions visit me that I, I literally was in tears. I, and I've never had that happen. And it was during that time of year. It helped to have a lot of blue Lotus tea, which is a third eye opener. <laughs> I had a lot of it. Um, but I just wanted to, yeah, add that and, and that, that being a part of, um, what's available to us, uh, you know, is, is something they're very frightened of. And this is why this has been a very targeted window for the total takeover, this NWO, um, this showdown of forces, you know, that's happening is something that we absolutely can win within ourselves. And, uh, you know, the true parents of creation 
uh, the true cosmic and natural laws, you know, that are not, you know, bound by the judicial system or bound by imposter gods or lower creator gods or religions or dogmas um, really is supporting us. And all the planetary alignments and the greater intelligence know exactly what it needs to do to heal this planetary system, just like we do. And if we align with that, you know, that's the ascending planet is it's healing itself from the Tiamat explosion, the asteroid belt, Maldek, you know, all these galactic wars that have stepped down into holocausts and genocides and, you know, things that would make it very, very difficult for us to share our codes and like switch each other on and help the dormancy in one another switch on. And that's why it's required that we work together and harmonize our differences and embrace that diversity as a beautiful thing. And seeing it so turned into this divide and conquer and confusion and disconnect. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I feel like the breaking point is right under people's noses. You know, we know accidents and injuries in our own personal lives or, or dis-ease has brought us closer to ourselves in the face of it versus giving it away and giving it away to somebody else to um, diagnose and solve. Um, and and there, there's a fine line between where that help is not helpful anymore and, and have the courage to have a voice, to trust yourself, to say no, to have a boundary and to know that you're way more in charge of you and your creative energy and your healing than anybody possibly could be. And there will be people to walk with you and assist you, but not take advantage of your fear, your vulnerability, or try and trigger that and mind control you into a future you don't need to create. So I just wanted to send, say that. Amen. Alfred, final thoughts? Peace on earth. This is a very elevating program, indeed. Well, it's, it's wonderful uh, that we just are still doing it. And, you know, we try and do this once a month. And um, I feel so uplifted. I was having a really hard time before I got on the call. And I'm walking away just with a smile in my soul and heart because you both are so activating and so inspiring. And so I, it's been really wonderful to be with you tonight. Well, I felt like I was bragging when I said, I got a show in half an hour. I got to go. And they said, you have a show in half an hour and you're talking to me. Who is it with? And I said, <clears throat> great granddaughter of President Dwight D. Eisenhower. And they're, whoa, yeah, I know her. And Alfred Lambermont Weber, 82, written half a dozen books in the last few years. I mean, mind boggling. Did you cut your hair? Do I see shorter you hair or is it pulled in back, Alfred? No, it's oh. just that I, that, I, that I had to, uh, you know. I Okay, there it is. It's still all there. I yeah. didn't know if you cut it. No. Yeah, and I don't normally talk about hair. Laura's going, did you mean mine? She's oh, no, no. My, well, I, I, I'm so low maintenance that it's just like, yeah, it's growing, but it's 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 definitely like uh, uh, I don't give a crap hairdo because um, I just I don't know. I don't know. I've been in a funk. Um, <laughs> so, so but, shall, we, shall we wrap this? Yeah, sure. I would love to braid your hair. It's just so nice. OK. Um, yeah, so I said all I want to say. My website's cosmicguy.org. I'll be in New York City uh, from the 19th to the 21st, and I'll be uh, at an expo in Largo, Florida, um, October 31st or November 1st to 3rd. Um, if anybody's in the area, um, I do in-person sessions, and I've got workshops and panels. And um, so, if, yeah, if you guys want to share, you know, what you have coming up in any website. Why don't we do a news evolution after the peaceful transfer of power in 2025? Peaceful. And not before I'm counting. I'm mm -hmm. counting on peaceful. So we, we, <coughs> we might might wait till next year before we talk again. Yeah, we're we're in November just about, right? Yeah. Well, well, if we live through the, maybe we'll do a we, New Year's like a New Year's show. Go ahead, Patty. Yeah. If we live through the election, if they don't burn the country down or blow it up or cause volcanoes or um, bring the war over here, then we can do another show in December and celebrate the holidays. <laughs> great, with great, and joy, knowing <laughs> that we have slayed the dragon, that we have exposed the demons, that Diddy has introduced us to all of his friends. Butts and wow, what an interesting time to be alive and aware. And yeah, I think our audience is yeah, because really, we are carrying, really wise people. We are carrying the new consciousness and the new 
resolution and the new solution, as Laura said in her initial presentation. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it'd be great to set our intention for 2025. And then we'll definitely, if, the, if it all syncs up, that'd be great. And and we'll definitely uh, be uh, navigating this together, seeing what happens in 2025. So I really look forward to being with you guys again. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Do you guys want to share anything coming up or your websites? or? Well, we'll just be ready. And people can go to omniversity.ca. No, no. <laughs> Omniversity.us. Omniversity.us. Can't decide which country. You're a bi country man. I know. <laughs> Omniversity.us. Well, I have two websites. <clears throat> One is my films, cropcirclefilms.com. I have six movies, eight movies. <laughs> I won a bunch of awards at the International UFO Congress. This is the one that got me in trouble, Crop Circle Diaries really told the truth about the fact that crop circles have a technology happening naturally that we re-engineered in the lab to bring the food supply back. And there were two attempts on my life because I did it. So my survival tool, c60evo.com, evo as in evolution, c60evo.com. And uh, I encourage everybody to try it. If you sign up for a monthly subscription, you save 20%. Save 20%, even if you cancel it tomorrow, it's okay with me. But I want you to get the discount and try the product because everybody deserves to feel better. This stuff works. Energy, mental clarity, better sleep, surviving horrific surgeries, having gaping stitches. All I know firsthand is save my life, Fixed all those things that I mentioned, and I have an authentic smile on my face, but it could be because I'm with my buddies here that hold the greatest wisdom, which is peace. You know, if we set the intention for peace, we're going to get there. And we've never had a time that where we've been this close to communism. But again, 20, 25 years ago, I toured with Patricia Kodorobulus, great wisdom keeper, and she told us then... Watch out, because everything's coming to the surface to be healed. So what the astrology says, too, and so important, no matter what gets dredged up to the surface, you know, everything, you know, that's igniting it is to clear it, to heal it, um, to bring total unconditional love into those places uh, and deprogram from the conditioning of punishment and reward and um, status and labels and and really not be so compartmentalized. There's so much to embrace and remember about who we truly are. So anyway. Awesome. All of you are amazing out there. Every single one of you. Or we wouldn't be here at this time in human history. Right, King Alfred? You know, and, and today, uh, Sunday, October 13th, is Thanksgiving Day in Canada. Oh, wow. As we speak. There's an enormous Thanksgiving dinner going on downstairs. Oh, we'll let you go. Room, and there's a huge number of guests downstairs. Well, go to the party. Beautiful evening. And we can catch up about that other question over email. And uh, much love. Happy Thanksgiving. And yeah. see you no, guys no, next no. week. I, 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 I will be here to, we, we can talk about it now. Oh, that's cool. Um, no, okay. Well, we're, we'll stop recording. And thanks so much, everybody. Have a beautiful um, holiday. Holiday. Holidays. Happy holidays, everyone. We love you. Yes. Great. Thank you, everybody. Bye, guys.